everybody um, I would like uh, to welcome you to another edition of our uh, in studio music talk series presented by the Austrian Cultural Forum Warsaw in partnership with the Unsound Festival our today's guest uh, uh, is um, Vienna based Rosa Anschutz we are very excited to have you here Rosa and our host is again uh, Wukash from the Tainze label, ex-curator from the Unsound Festival. Hello, uh, Rosa. Hello, Vukas. Hello. <laughs> Thank you Hi. for the invite. Yeah. <laughs> so happy Hi, to have you here. Thank you for the introduction. And um, yeah, to, as uh, as Arthur said, today we're um, our guest is uh, Rosa, uh, an artist who works with um, different media. We're going to mostly talk about uh, music and music um, production today, but Rosa also works with sound art and installation and um, sculptures, um, photography, video. Am I missing something? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, comics, but I haven't uploaded them. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, lot of activities but let's um, let's focus on the music and since it's a workshop let's start from the very beginning like how did you start what uh, what pushed you into the direction of music well i was first uh, when when it was detected in a young age that i'm interested in music like i was very early on forced to um do some classic um classic education which started with playing the piano and then going over to uh, traverse flute and then later in a big band playing trumpet. Um, so there was a like very classical bass, but whenever this hit me too much with learning something, I was um, getting very distracted or kind of stubborn. So I stopped, um, but there's this bass and also on uh, singing, like I was playing in bands, which was kind of like a phase with uh, 16, like we were, really into Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, so more rock, like rock music based um, stuff and um, choir singing. So there has been uh, a lot of four built stuff. And then like doing my first solo track started um, also early on by just starting with um, acoustic guitar, MySpace and <laughs> things like that. <laughs> I, I already see the connection with uh, with your new record, like as you said, like choirs and, and rock music, because um, I think I hear uh, those connections to like both like sacred music and uh, some like dark wave, post punk, gothic um, stuff, but also obviously um, a lot of electronic um, techniques and production um, production. So um, how how did you uh, come into this uh, this world, this 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 particular sound? What were the, the challenges to, or was it natural to combine everything you've you've experienced so far? Mm, I think a big role in the electronic music plays um, that I was growing up in Berlin, um, perhaps. I mean. <laughs> I kind of like had this, um, I don't know if it's like, a, I wouldn't say it's a typical youth in Berlin, but it's just something which is based there. And so you use the opportunities if you are um, doing things very early on. So I started going out quite early. Like uh, I went to the first clubs just because of the interest of music, actually. It wasn't so much the, I mean, of course, also the people, <coughs> Um, but it started like with, I don't know, 14, I went to Chalet, that was the beginning, like it was just like the soft, soft beginning. <laughs> um, later then it played more and more the role that the uh, music was also fitting. So there was, I think, Urban Spree was perhaps the most important place for um, these post-punk events and um, bands that I've seen and that influenced me a lot. And also... I mean, I don't want to say too too much because I know it's also kind of like a stereotype of Berlin, but also I, I went to Berkheim quite a lot from uh, 17 or, or 16 on until uh, 19. Um, <laughs> so also, I mean, 
it is an influence and um, the people that I've been around with also musicians and yeah. This, Ber this Berlin connection kind of manifested like um, in your career because uh, Cobosil remixed uh, one of your one of your tracks and I actually checked today because I knew I knew it was a big track but I I've, I've counted like across various platforms like a few million plays of that and uh, it's uh, it's huge so uh, how how did you like went from from being uh, a clubber like to, to being connected to to the club uh, to the club scene in Berlin? I mean, I wasn't so much. I mean, I had my kind of group of people that I went with, but I was always on my own. Like the point when we got inside, I kind of slipped away and just went for myself because I was really there to um, be there with the music and be there with myself, which kind of has also like, which maybe is connected being with your body, also with the music because it's body music. And um, like in general, I think this like body um, body term is, I mean, it's a conflicted term, but um, what is a body and like whose body, but it's it plays a big role because that's what you have and what you carry around and perhaps also the most, um, um, like one of the things that you think about a lot when you're a teenager i guess as well like what, what is my body <laughs> no, but um and to experience that in such an uh, environment is quite harsh can be harsh but it's also interesting and i think that was uh that played also a big uh, role in uh, making the music so maybe maybe let's listen now um uh, let's listen to one of your tracks um um, I will quickly connect here um, the soft resource. Let's take a listen to Rosa Anschutz's sound. To pay the body. And uh, just to quickly mention, the video is intentionally pixelated. It's not your. <laughs> it's not your connection. Okay. 
I think that was a perfect track to introduce your sound because it has all those um, all those elements I've, I've, I've spoken about uh, before, but also connected to what we we're talking about the body. Um, and maybe maybe we can start from 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 this track, um, like um, to kind of like dismantle uh, how do you work? Because there's like two two like, I don't know, like faces of, of vocals you sing, but also you're you're using choirs. Um, do you um, do you record every sound yourself? Do you, do you like duplicate your own voice or do you sample? Where do you where do you look for the sounds? Like uh, usually, I'm like when I'm starting to uh, make a track, I'm in Vienna, like at my place, and I'm just recording. So it's like a very intuitive thing, which is also why I quit um, following like systemas like systematic um, learning. So I think there's I don't know if it's stubbornness or if it's just a barrier that I don't need to cross because then I would never um, I don't I don't think there's the ultimate knowledge about something or it's n nothing I'm interested in like I don't have to learn an instrument and or make a gear talk or I think it's interesting to hear what some like uh, what I'm or perhaps like to talk about the instruments but not as as a kind of show off thing so it's tools I would say so and also by using the voice again and again is something perhaps to um, kind of work um, against this like making music myself. So you have a, like you multiply yourself. So you are with your choir. Um, and it's also a, a thing of um, just something that is a lot of fun to me to sing the first melody and then put another. So it's also like it has some kind of like ecstatic uh, moment when I'm doing this. Um, because when you sing more and more vocals and you just record and you don't stop to record and you have them all um, over like overlapping each other it's it's crazy that you can do it yourself I mean it's this home studio kind of thing but it's um, I think that's yeah is some kind of company in that moment as well and joy to put it in the <laughs> I think joy is a very uh, very much a word from coming from this like sac sacrilegious uh, <laughs> 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 it's joy and and, and when you write songs um, um, do you write with um, with a single voice in mind and then it just like evolves uh, it's kind of like a mo moment thing to to turn things into into like choirs or like mm -hmm. expand it's really intuition um, like sometimes it's also that um, actually there's like melodies in my head the whole day which is a bit annoying <laughs> so what I also do is to sometimes just record quickly with my iPhone something that was in my head like a melody and then I get back to it later or sometimes I have um, like I have something on the modular synthesizer which I start with and um, using a lot of like uh, modular synthesizer more for drums and like noise like stuff and uh, like um not too much the um, synthesizer patterns um and then i put a like i have um like texts on my um, telephone also as a note and i adapt them to the sound or it's, it's but it happens quick like it's and also the way i work is i think very um very nicely and very easy because <laughs> Um, the like I'm sending my stuff very early or stuff like the recording like a proper recording to Jan Wagner my producer in Berlin and then he's already um, thinking about the track and then he's just adjust like adjusting small things like he's always like it's always very 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 close to the original recording and what Jan does is to put like some extra bass sometimes in or like uh, just empathize like um a few things and this way we can work super quick because we also do it online mm -hmm. um, we have this shared dropbox folder and we call each other every day and make tracks almost every day <laughs> yeah and how did you find this uh, this common tongue with um with Vian? because uh, i don't know maybe it was like natural maybe that was like uh, just like uh click but um like my experience like my recent experience for example was that um uh, when producing a thing for the label it was it wasn't that easy and sometimes uh sometimes what what what, it, what is in the head of one person doesn't really match the the other person's energy so how was it in your case it was i mean i met jan through max kobusil actually um 
because they study together and um, known each other for quite some time. And also Jan does the production of most of the Ostwood um, recordings um, or like production, but like uh, adjusting uh, things. And I'm, I'm not so good with the terms, so <laughs> let's keep it simple. But he also works in that field. Um, uh, but also with a lot of vocals. So when uh, Max Kobosil was writing me back in the days, like he found my music in the internet, that's how we met. I mean, we met virtually. I think that was, I think there was quite a time when MySpace got delay, uh, deleted and this was over, but that was the first um, thing for me to share my music. And then SoundCloud was there, but it was a very uh, quick period of time when I had the feeling that a lot of producers and um, people that are managing music found a lot of uh, interesting people on SoundCloud, but then it was getting so much, like everyone uploaded on SoundCloud. And now I think it's hard to be discovered, or I don't know if it still happens, but I mean, it's, that's how it was with Max that he just found my stuff on SoundCloud and wrote me. And um, then I met Jan, like he said, yeah, Jan is good with vocals and might fit. And, I think the strongest thing that connects me with Jan is this, um, it doesn't really matter how how the sound is created, we just listen, like what, what we hear is the most important thing. And there's a kind of, I mean, describing yourself as a sensitive person, but it's just like listening and also listening to the others and listening to the instrument and, and what is coming is coming and no rules. like. I mean, there's no, we don't think in genres and we don't have this, I can understand what you mean with this vision of a producer, because there's definitely people that want to transform you into your uh, kind of, uh, into their kind of perception or also trends. I mean, wh what's working right now. And I also know this from a lot of um, colleagues that they're um, chasing this one sound and they, eager to to not finish a track because they're searching for something or they want this track to be something and i think that's a kind of difficult thing it, it can work but it's not something i'm interested in so i'm also for now i i'm super lucky with jan and i'm really not like names or i don't know like i don't really care <laughs> And it's, yeah, and that's important that you have someone that is supporting you and your music and adjusting things and not like, and I mean, projects like the remix with Kobuzi, that's joy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, I don't want to say funny, but it's mm -hmm. also just something different, but it's also there and this is there and yeah, so. And how is uh, how is working remote working remotely uh, working out for you? Because now you're based in um, in Vienna, so um, there's a distance and new challenges to to overcome. It's really working well because we kind of figured this out also earlier when I was still living in Berlin, and um, I was always giving him my files, and then uh, he was preparing. So, but this can also happen virtually. So. We have this Dropbox thing. I don't want to make any uh, any um, advertisement for Dropbox. But it's practical because you have this folder that you can share with someone, and it's there, and you just adjust things. And um, and you see, and every time when Jan is putting um, putting a um, kind of reconstruction of the track, I see it on my desktop immediately. And I think um, being in contact is very important to do it virtually as well. I mean, if you do it virtually with the distance, we're calling each other and I'm telling them, ah, nice, I listened to the new version, but I think of putting this. Um, and it's really funny, like our ears are really trained by now. I can really say something like, yeah, I think this would be nice if there's like a um, eight uh, knotted, um, delay like this one in Ableton on that kick and Jan is saying yeah it was uh, already on it but super um, super silent so it, it, and then yeah make it louder and stuff like that so it's a constant uh, communication but 
really nice. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, and before we um, before we move to um, another section, we're gonna show a bit of your uh, live uh, live video, but also like since I mentioned Vienna, uh, since you, since you moved and now we actually can't. Uh, put on shows and go to gigs but uh, how um, how was your like musical experience not as a producer but in general like since moving to to Vienna mm, I really I'm really glad that I moved to Vienna I have to say because the scene is pretty I mean pretty small but it's, it's smaller of course than Berlin because Berlin is a huge city and there's a different concentration on things I mean which is also clear the smaller the place is the smaller is the concentration but i think that can really work on when you search for connections and you search for um yeah kind of like a place where you can develop and to be thrown into the into the tossing up water is, is it's quite hard and there's there's an over um which is which is something i miss then or missed in vienna and then to not have all the concerts and all all the opportunities, like every night, there's something happening, and Vienna, it's not. Mm, so from that side, but also if you decide more, because I also left this um, raver context for reasons, and I also moved to Vienna for a reason, and also to decide at some point, okay, if I if I if I go there the next time, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna be on the other side. I, like, I want to be the one who's performing and not the one who's uh, coming to the concert. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, sh the show we're going to watch, it was actually, uh, it was recorded in Vienna, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look. That was recorded for the United We Stream and uh, for Arte Television. We had a, um, a, a bit of a look um, at how you how we actually do things, and it's a it's a very minimalistic setup, very very, very functional. So maybe I should, before we jump into Ableton in the next section, maybe just two words about how you approach um, live situations. I mean, for now, the live setup was that simple because I started in the beginning to have everything with me, like every instrument, and then it's getting complicated um, <laughs> because. I mean, I started by having the first concert, this whole loop thing started. And then it also went on pretty much like a production of music, like building loops also from like a modular synthesizer, putting it in Ableton and stuff like that. And uh, I started with the looper to just help myself being, being able to perform live myself. So um, the first concerts I played was with uh, e-guitar and uh, vocals and a looper and then I went on with having an e-bass with me, but I also had a synthesizer with me. So at the end, I had five instruments, also the traverse flute. And then I decided, okay, it's the most important thing I want to focus on is the vocals. So what I do live mostly is to also adjust even more and more choirs to um, to the singing, like singing the the lead uh, lead voice, but also like singing it different every time actually so to um, build choirs and also one thing I'm doing uh, is um, I'm not leaving any break at the concert so I'm, I'm repeating phrases from the tracks um, because I really like 
um, the confusion when when there when there actually would be this pause after one track, but and people like not in a live stream, but at the concert, people would like, I mean, would like to clap. Maybe they didn't like it, but um, I don't know. But usually they <laughs> clap. <laughs> they don't um, have this room, or if they, there's no space. And then you just have a whole show, and at the end of the concert, nobody <laughs> wants to clap. <laughs> like, and I, I really like it because I'm, I don't, I'm not in a, in a, um, in a um, kind of, um, I don't know how to say it right now in English, but I don't want to say like selfishly, um, I don't need it, but I like the confusion and I like to make a performance um, out of it and also use this this time frame. Um, between. I like it, I like it. It's disruptive, it, uh, it makes people remember the show and it's, um, it's, not, it's not that often that, uh, your expectations are, are are subverted, so that's uh, that's actually cool. I, I I like when stuff like that happens in the shows. It's uh, yeah. so that, that's great. So maybe maybe let's um, let's jump into into Ableton. If you can tell everyone like what have you prepared for us? Because um, uh, that's um, that's going to be something related to some of your new uh, new projects and. Um, it's combining live instruments with with Ableton and and um, let's see how, how how you do it. Yeah, so um, to introduce the project first, perhaps um, it was called Kumanus Tag, which is referring to um, an ancient tale of the Saint Kumanus. It's a lady that was the daughter of a of a king, and the king was in a fight with another king. And to um, close the fight or to kind of like put the weapons down, he decided he was going to, like the other king should marry his daughter, but she believed in Jesus and she didn't want it to. Um, so she was um, like recited from her uh, father and um, overnight um, she was growing a beard and, and the father totally uh, abandoned her, her from the kingdom because he said she's an ugly woman and she can't uh, marry this other king any longer but she's a saint and she's a kind of I mean no none of the performance is uh, religious and I'm also not religious I went to a catholic uh, like first school which of course has an influence I guess but I'm not religious which is important. <laughs> um, yeah, but in the queer community, like the gay queer community, St. Kümmernis is a total, um, like she's known. Um, yeah, so what we um, had was, we had performers from very different parts of, um, of the world and, or like it was international. <laughs> and uh, the instructor was Sarah Lisa Baltz, um, that's her name. And so we had a procession or like a procession um, and I was writing the music for a procession. So, um, and decided the instrument I'm bringing in there, which makes the most sense to me was getting back the trumpet, which I haven't played for yes. six years or so. Um, <laughs> but it was back really- to the roots. Yeah, back to the roots, back to the big yes. <laughs> <laughs> like to put the kind of uh, like the metal or not metal but the thing for the mouth like and mm -hmm. to have the, the pressure on your lips again it was crazy like just the feeling because you know it so well and um, and then you have it again and I don't know that's a great thing about instruments because like uh, the ones that um, like the um, like traverse flute and, and trumpets and saxophone it's all like a different um, axis and it's really beautiful. So um, I'm just going to show you um, the session I did in Ableton, um, which was used as a as a kind of like leading um, leading melody of the mm -hmm. whole performance. I'm just going to start with the beginning. So, or like I recorded trumpet um, in the studio live, and there's parts um, where I kind of I mean I'm recording instruments but then I'm also like distracting them sometimes here not too much but there's parts where I pitch them I, yeah, I sampled a lot of things like I was recording the two performance and I'm 
The whole, like it's a lot of, uh, I don't know if it's another way, but what I have, I think, I think I think I'm I'm losing losing you, uh, Rosa. So maybe let's listen to a bit and then um, yeah. Uh, yeah. we'll continue. One thing that down there, can you see my mouse? Mm -hmm. Yes. Just, I'm, ju I'm just gonna open it. I mean, it's. I left the instrument quite as it was, like as like I didn't put too much effects on it. But what I did was to pitch uh, like the uh, trumpet, um, the trumpet sound, like multiply. Like there's this. Um, so it's one recorded sample of the trumpet, like in the studio, and then I have like five different um, layers of trumpet by pitching them or I also yeah sometimes I also build um drums out of the um out of the trumpet but it's it's also like there's this um should I stop sharing my screen perhaps uh no no let's uh let's see it's uh it's good to see like uh um everything that uh that you might think uh, that's important or or interesting so mm -hmm. this is good. I mean but uh, there's there's always this. Um, it's a bit hard for me to explain too much because it's all very very um, intuitive, kind mm, of. Of course. So there, there's no uh, rules. Also on like using the um, audio effects. Like I just sometimes I go by by themes. Like as they um, as they like what's their name. Like sometimes I really go themed. Ah okay yeah okay put it. And then it's really quick. Like I just um, go into the audio effects, and um, like I take one, take one uh, thing, and I just kind of I don't know, like if that makes any sense right now. But I just uh, throw a lot of effects on it, and then um, I start by um, like trying them out, putting like um, what I can also which was it like this one is high trumpets and um, I, mean, I don't know if that makes uh, sense to show but uh, boom, boom, boom. you can see it clearly yeah There's no now your voice is a little bit gone there's a yeah Thing with combining um, the channel of the inside channel with the um, microphone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Okay. 
I don't know them all too well. So it's also like a um, coincidence what happens. Um, so this could also uh, be transferred into like putting a lot of sub bass on it and be transferred to a drum, like the bass for like the drums or, so it's really, um, was really more um, focusing on what I'm seeing from the performance. So maybe I will stop mm -hmm. sharing the screen of Ableton and just show a little bit of the performance that mm -hmm. we did. Okay. Um, that was, I mean, it's with no sound. I am, <laughs> that's the lady in the, in the Hyde Park. I am, so that was one, one dance or like one, one part of the, of the dance. So, oh yeah, it's really short, it's really short, but um, just to, like it was, yeah, this uh, costumes were super important, the trumpet was super important, and um, I already came to the performance or um, like participating in the performance with this one signal of the trumpet, like this mm -hmm. also has been um, every time we left, like there was like this procession or procession, mm -hmm. and we have to different uh, stages so there was a village square there was the cemetery and every time we left there was an audio signal of the trumpet so I was also co-performing with the other people which I haven't done before so that was also like a new experience um to me um and it's also be um you can still watch the video for um, another I think until the um 4th of April like April 4th on the website of Brut like Brut Vienna um, there's this movie that we recorded. Could you send us a link yeah. maybe so everyone yeah. can check it out? Yeah. This would be great. And do you um, use, do you have any favorite plugins which you use in order to deconstruct the trumpet sounds or other? Mm, I mean, I have to admit that I'm very much into reverb, but I think you can okay. also use music. <laughs> Well, I mean, I like every, um, which I really like on the audio effects um, is that you can um, imagine any kind of place like using reverb makes makes the room or the sound of the room much bigger or you just you just lose uh, lose your surrounding or the, the actual actual place that you were recording music. And um, so that's why I love reverb a lot. And also it's connected to this like uh, Catholic or like this church, church. Of course. Of course. The um, natural reverb is in yeah. the <laughs> church, cathedral. And delays I really like, but I, I couldn't say there's like one favorite plugin because um, it's the same with talking about instruments. I mean, there's, there's, everything is there and everything is good that it's there. Sometimes I don't like it, sometimes I like it. And also the good thing on combining so many um, that you are able, I mean, it's with guitars, when you when you like buy one, um, one effect for your guitar, it's ex expensive to buy them, or can be expensive, like the pedals. Sure. You can combine them, but <laughs> you use like, if you do it digitally, the, like the like the um, maybe the original sound of the effect you wouldn't like, but if you combine it with them and them and them, then it's getting really nice. And you're oh wow, okay, now it's like a drum sound, or now like maybe it was a drum sound and now it sounds like a guitar, but you haven't played the guitar. And plugging every instrument that you want into your computer and recording it, I think also a modular synthesizer. Like it's also not actually. I mean, you can buy filter uh, modules um, of course but you can also um like my drum uh, not drum rack but my modular rack is pretty um how you say again um like drony like there's a lot of drones like a lot of vcos um like different ones and i use the effects on ableton for the um for adjusting stuff because i mean it's just a way of uh, like, just be realistic on your, on your gear. Like what, what can I have and what I can't. And, um, and then using what, uh, what you can also use and combining the uh, analog and digital. Yes. 
I think that's one of the threads that that is repeated um, in every session we have. Every artist say, just like use uh, use what you have. Like there's like some free instruments, like free plugins. Um, just experiment with what's around. Uh, and nobody really wants to uh, be this person who has like thousands of euros put into modular stuff and they just fiddle and fiddle and fiddle and they can't find uh, uh, what they want. No. <laughs> <laughs> this could be like a motto of, uh, of this session um, mm. to, just, uh, to just experiment and, and, and use what's, uh, what's around. Um, does anyone has uh, any questions, um, guys? Uh, ev everyone has turned off their uh, their videos, so I can see you. But if you have any questions, uh, feel free um, feel free to ask uh, Rosa. You can write in a chat, uh, and I can pass it on. Maybe you wanna um, just do it live. Let us know. <laughs> no. We'll see. Arthur, do you want to dig into um, something? Um, I'm 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 curious about uh, just um, uh, Rosa's perception of uh, Vienna and uh, if she uh, how, how the workflow works for her. <laughs> it's it's a question and. Um, also about your music influences and also the, the whole dark wave thing. Have you started to listen to dark wave or to, to, to the uh, original source material from the 80s or what's the history? I, or was it the drum machine thing or the electric body music thing, which hooked, which somehow influenced you? Because I don't know, I, I used to go to Berghain, for example, and to Panorama Bar. And the sound was always quite um, conservative from my point of view, from my 90s uh, Berlin rave kit point of view. It didn't change that much if you compared it to, let's say, Ewerk or early Tresor Globus. It was more the same, the same, like downstairs techno, upstairs house. And, you know, um, so how uh, have you uh, created your sound and what was the key moment? Was it the sound from the clubs or was it more a particular record or recordings? And I, I uh, yeah, I'm just interested in, in I'm, this. I was growing up with good music. I mean, I was, they had taste around me. Okay, you're lucky. You're, you're, okay, you've been blessed by uh, lots of interesting music. Yeah, yeah. So it was a lot of um, things more from the 80s, but also like okay. um, things from 2000, like a lot of Porter's Head I was listening and Tricky was very important. For Bristol me. music from Bristol. Yes. Yeah, and um, also the combination of um, uh, lyrics uh, is yeah. very important. Like I really um, like sounds mostly when when there's a like strong lyrical part and um, and I, I can like sync with, um, I mean, I don't have to sync with every text, but if there's like some dramaturgy or like dramaturgy in, in the lyrics, and there's also this thing about uh, dark wave, which I just really like, and it's the music I'm, I'm opening up the most with because um, it's not like the only music I'm listening to. Like I'm really like, I'm also with that, I'm really, um, yeah, what, what, like what, what sounds good. Um, sure. sounds good. Um, that's why music is there, I guess. And so, um, yeah, but in dark wave, there's this thing of, um, I don't know, there's some drama sometimes in there and there's some, some um, like, uh, like you have the strophe and you have the- um, You have a the, song structure. Yeah, the song and structure. And not a track, not a dance club record structure, right? It's, it's... Yeah, and also like this uh, whole post-punk dark wave thing has been, um, coming into the techno absolutely the last time and like also the german uh, german lyrics and and or like from all kinds uh, of countries but with like this dark wave elements it's pretty much coming in techno i think mm, and i don't know like one reason might be that there's this um, ballad and like uh, the refrains that are so big sometimes like yes pop almost like i yes. mean yes. pop 
very emotional and very rich yes yes absolutely yeah, and i really like that because i can also totally refer fair because um most of my outlet of music happens because of emotions of course and um, all the lyrics are based on emotions and and the way dark wave kind of transport this uh, with this heavy synthesizer and, the and there's like some some uh, rhythm and then you can dance to it i really like it yeah, that's, yeah. and other influences i mean i think this time of urban spree was quite i mean that was the first uh, or like one of the venues in berlin um, that is really important for that scene uh, like white trash was also quite but I think it's, yeah, also a lot of places closed as well. Yes, yes. I, I remember White Trash from, uh, yeah, from ages ago, beginning of the 2000s. <laughs> remember, this was the place where basically um, Peaches and Gonzalez and this whole Canadian crew, back then, yeah, the Canadian crew from Amsterdam moved to Berlin. And this was this where these super talented people, Peaches and Gonzalez, they, I think they used to be a couple back then, but they used for sure... To perform together on stage and also at white trash and this was a yes it was a very uh, special moment but uh, in regards of of, of uh, the influence of uh, of of 80s uh, wave music on 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 uh, electronic music and techno i think it's uh interesting because every 10 years there's a certain um um you can tell that there's a big influence of this music again on some certain electronic music, but every time it comes back, it comes back in a different uh, fashion, in a different style. It's, uh, it's, it feels what you do completely different than anything else and very also contemporary and very now. It's, it doesn't have a retro uh, feel at all it doesn't feel like you try to be in 1982 or something oh. so, <laughs> so um, this is really interesting because I, I i had this thought that the 80s actually have like surpassed the 80s like the 80s yeah. is no longer like a decade like no the 80s are just like forever you know <laughs> and like and you yes. You can be connected, but you, you don't have to be 80s to be connected. And it's, it's just bigger, you know, it's just bigger than the, the, what, what it originally was. And it's, um, it's super interesting um, how, how it's all um, developing. And, and just like Arthur said, you, of course, there are some artists that are trying to emulate the sound, but also there's so many that, uh, that they just build uh, something completely completely new out i think that the 80s never left and i i was just recently inspired someone i don't know who it was um it was a very smart uh, person said that um this whole 80s 90s 2000 2060s 50s this whole um uh, decade thing of framing history into 10 years portions is uh, basically the obsession of uh, pop music and mm -hmm. pop culture. When you step outside of this world, uh, it turns out that you have completely different mm -hmm. uh, frames and uh, uh, which can be much, much longer. They can be 20 years, 25. When you look at politics, they can be 17 years. But with, with the music, we are somehow uh, trapped in this whole decade thing, myself uh, included. Uh, and so maybe it's just the fact that the sound somehow arrived at the end of the 70s, maybe, which we are talking about, the wave sound, and never left and has, uh, yes, has, uh, has its life on its own, as you just said, <laughs> Lucas, yeah. in a way, right? Well, we just have to check who made the first decade list, like the top <laughs> 60s records, 70s records, and it's probably their fault. Yes, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I guess so. I, I think we have to blame someone, but let's don't blame it. No one today. <laughs> yeah, we got some questions from from Zbyszek. Um, Zbyszek wants to know if you're working in a home studio and mm -hmm. how long does it take you um, take you to compose a piece? Like how much time do you do, do you spend on on, on one uh, body of music. 
Um, well, I start in Vienna and it's a home studio. So I record everything there and then I send it over. And then, it, I mean, like it's something that happens within like one session and it can easily happen that, I, that I'm in there <clears throat> very concentrated um, for hours or just like one hour and I have the lyrics and comes very like so-so and then I send it over to Jan and um, then I'm coming to Berlin uh, sometimes like um, and we have a long list of tracks that we want to re-record so we always record the vocals again in Berlin and sometimes we also record the guitar again or like instruments again um, but also like um thinking about the track, thinking about the way of performing the lyrics, because there's like, of course, like a different meaning of the lyrics in the track. So there's different ways how you could perform the track and to like feel the track and the lyrics. And that's what we do in Berlin. And then it continues by like, he's sending me over the development of the recordings. And I'm saying, ah, maybe like this, and that can take on for some time, but, um, I mean, we have uh, projects like firm projects planned. Um, so there's um, something and also like sometimes I'm working on tracks. So that was the first thing I did um, or like the, the thing I did for the first time is a, um, something that is releasing on the on May 15th. Yeah. Uh, with Tale of Us. <laughs> it's really interesting. Hmm. <laughs> it's a project. Oh. Oh wow, wow. Oh la la, this is a high profile uh, project, <laughs> Hail of Us, right? This is a yeah, big, big dance I, I music project. Quite <laughs> good. I haven't listened to them, but also any music has the right to be there somehow. I Absolutely. Think. And um, to try out things also doesn't um, directly reflect on what you're doing yourself. So I think it, it's, I mean, I made this. I'm, I'm singing super um, low and it's it's a, it's a nice, I like the track, it's, it's nice. So this, this is coming out in May, but that was not easy to do because you had all the, um, it, it just felt super foreign. So we spent maybe two, two or three days like in the studio to record the vocals for this track. Um, you keep your dreams on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out. <laughs> Um, but uh, that was not easy but also the list in Berlin is always so long that we can also easily postpone something and say okay but we have this other track that we can work on if this is like if you don't feel this right now then we just do something else so and very focused um, so because I'm always not so long in Berlin now I'm going back to Vienna what is the uh, label name of the uh, which will release your music should you just mention do you know the label maybe or? i should know the label okay. i mean the project, <laughs> the project is called anima so there's it's a compilation of of tracks that tell of us produced and then they invited musicians mm. to be but it's i mean i'm doing projects like this or like something in april is also releasing um which is a um, track for for a small um, it's a, like two two people work together like one is um, making a sense sense like a incense mm -hmm. uh, and the other one is a parfum mm -hmm. and then I got sent the, the uh, smell and of the sense and then I wrote this track for that so that's also something else. oh was I made the track also in one night like I lighted up the incense uh, thing and really put everything on like this time it was all <clears throat> was all not Ableton just for arranging the recorded stuff but using drum computers and drum machines and the modular synthesizer and not adjusting um, effects that cannot also happen <laughs> yeah so different sorts of <laughs> music are coming <laughs> and also like yeah something I can talk about right now <laughs> <laughs> new stuff coming yeah pretty much yeah. <laughs> we can't wait for it and uh, any um, 
performances in Vienna planned right now or? Um... Mm, I mean, the festivals got postponed again and again. So the reality festival is supposed to happen in July and also Donau Festival in Krems is supposed to happen in October. Um, and yeah, also, I mean, the concerts get postponed, but performance wise, we have this other uh, performance that the one I sh showed the music of, like it was one we already rehearsed in February and we're going to Innsbruck with the performance and it's part of a festival and they also have, like they show the movies that like we record a movie and then they will show the movies same as Brut on their website. And that's where I'm going in a few days. Okay. And, um... How do you perceive, has um, the COVID situation changed the way of your production or do you feel the urge to produce music which is um, dance, you know, dance floor oriented or do you face sometimes this um, problem that you have something in mind? Because we, we talked a lot about the physicality, the physical experience of music and how it's connected to our bodies and all about all the venues which are you know which are very physical in regards of the whole experience starting with with the community and and uh, w connected with the gigantic sound systems and the bass and so on and so on do you face sometimes the problem that you imagine something of a type of a physical reality which is not happening at the moment and creates this kind of uh, <laughs> um, yes uh, weird uh, feeling of a reality which isn't there right now mm, I mean of course but also I mean more than like this hot like everyone together um, like experiencing music all together but most or even more I miss like being on stage and performing <laughs> yes I really, I really love performing and singing and um that's or like just like the whole whole preparation of, of making a concert like dressing up and the rituals and the rituals yeah yes. sort of, yeah and that's what I miss the most but yeah I mean also my situation is not so bad so I'm, I'm always rethinking uh if I'm, oh, I'm sad and stuff but i'm doing fine and um and sometimes i get the opportunity to perform like doing a mix i mean it's also a kind of performance and or like uh, or actually empathizing even more um that's also something i learned like when i had my release of the album votive in november like there wasn't any concert like there was just one concert in vienna like uh, shortly before the release. But then I uh, used the opportunity of interviews, like think, thinking about journalism uh, again, like to, to use journalism and uh, to, to like use it in a, in a thoughtful way and, and giving like thinking about your answers and, and taking care and answering the questions or taking time and questions. <laughs> See this as, okay, there's nothing else right at the moment, but I mean, still, someone is asking me questions. <laughs> and I, I mean, yeah, respectfully, um, also, I mean, towards the work of of, uh, of journalism. Uh, I think that made me think about the whole whole music music industry. Uh, oh yeah. yes, oh yes. Well, everyone is. Um, I don't want to say feeding each other, but like we. I mean, it's connected and it's, um, and yeah, it's a help for or like a circle or like generally like rediscovering the yes. circle yes. In, in COVID, like uh, on, on how you use nutrition, how you cook and how you, how you see your friends and it's all a circle and to stay close to that circle, I don't know, <laughs> but yeah. So, um, do we have any questions? Any more questions? I think. I don't have anything good. else on private. Uh... Yes, yes. So, I think, um, yes, I think we are already, uh, yes, it's, 
we are slowly over an hour so. yes we are slowly finishing our uh, music mu music talk i i'm really uh, i really hope that uh, you can um, that we will see you at a live performance rosa the next time not via zoom but maybe in warsaw or krakow or vienna and um, thank you so much guys thank you rosa <laughs> Thank you, Lukas. Uh, Thank you so much. It was great to meet and um, it's great always to a get pleasure. inspired. Yes, always a pleasure. And uh, yes, we will post um, a recording of our edited music talk in, a, I guess, in a month or so. Our next um, in studio guest in April, at the end of the April, will be uh, a Vienna classic and iconic electronic music producer Gerhard Potutznik. Uh, Gerhard um, was in charge for the production for example of Chicks and Speed. He was he was in charge for the creation of the so-called electro clash sound. He recorded hundreds and hundreds of records between Vienna, Berlin and Detroit and has a an, an super funny Austrian Viennese band called Die Mäuse with um, the illustrator Tex Rubinowitz. And you're highly welcome to join us next time. And Rosa, you're also invited. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Well, All the best. Yeah. yeah. Bye guys. <laughs> Thank you. See you soon. Bye bye. bye. Ciao ciao. Bye bye guys. Thank you. <laughs>